On the Reasonable Faith page, Dr. Craig periodically gets this objection, not so much from professional scholars, but from internet atheists. The atheists will argue that the reason we believe premise one of the Kalam cosmological argument, everything that begins to exist has a cause, is that we see things coming into existence all the time. However, everything we see uh, beginning to exist does not come into being ex nihilo, out of nothing, but comes into being from pre-existing material stuff. Therefore, the objection goes, we have no experience of things coming into being out of nothing, and therefore have no reason to believe that if something comes into being out of nothing, it therefore has a cause. So before we get into the argument, let's define a few things. I want to define rationalism, empiricism, and neo-Kantianism. So rationalism is the view I hold, which is that some of the, our ideas are innate. So things like cause might be hardwired into our brains and not based on experience. Empiricism says no, everything that's in our mind is first in the sense experience, and then the mind builds things like triangularity from repeat sense experience. Neo-Kantianism is sort of the third leg of this stool, and it states that the mind is hardwired with a categorical structure, categories like time or causation, and then experience fills certain categories. So it's a grid that filters our experience of reality. Now rationalism was the view of Plato and Descartes. Uh, now Aristotle, Aquinas, and Hume were different types of empiricists. And there are modern Neo-Kantians like Stuart Hackett, who wrote The Resurrection of Theism, and also William Lane Craig is also a Neo-Kantian. Now if rationalism is the case, then this whole objection from empiricism uh, just falls flat. This objection given by people like theoretical bullshit isn't relevant to a rationalist because it presupposes an empiricist viewpoint. We have this other distinction between efficient cause and material cause. Aristotle wrote in his work on metaphysics that there were multiple kinds of causation, four kinds of causation actually. But for the purposes of this uh, video, we're gonna focus on two of them. The first is called an efficient cause, and the second is called a material cause. So, a material cause is the stuff of which things are made. The bronze of a statue is the statue's material cause, uh, but the artisan's act of making the statue is the statue's efficient cause. When we think of causation today, normally we're thinking efficient cause. Like when Dr. Craig says, everything that began to exist has a cause, he doesn't mean bronze or a material cause, he means an efficient cause. Now, the objection to the Kalam is that all reasons we have for positing an efficient cause of the universe equally apply to a material cause. The objection may seem powerful at first blush, but I don't think it is. The first thing one needs to note is that the objection doesn't actually defeat the argument. Even if this was completely successful and we had no, uh, no way of overcoming the objection, we could still posit the material cause for physical reality and say that God created the universe ex Deo. So out of himself, this is sort of like the panentheist or process theology cause. So we could use that in order to give us God's creation with an efficient cause and with a material cause. Now this is very much biting the bull. This is a process theology is not something you really uh, want uh, to get into. It's riddled with problems. I think the problem of evil, for example, is unsolvable on process theology, uh, so we really don't want to go there. And of course, we don't really have to bite the bullets, because there's plenty of powerful objections against this objection to the Kalam argument. Considering that the arguments for the second premise of the argument state that since material objects are never quiescent, they're always in motion, but minds at least conceivably could be, you can at least imagine a mind holding a single conscious state as long as it wants, and then acting or someone sitting down and arbitrarily choosing to get up. This doesn't apply equally to efficient causes or to minds. So we're not on the same footing regarding the two causes. It might be more intuitive to posit the material cause, but the arguments for premise two of the Kalam argument rule out the possibility of a material cause. So we can't say the universe came into existence out of, mat of a material cause, uh, because if it did, it would have to be infinite in the past, and Dr. Craig's arguments for premise two destroy any possibility of that. So now that the question is, does our inability to posit a material cause eliminate any warrant we have for positing an efficient cause of the universe? And I don't think so. And let me go through a couple of thought experiments to show you why, from an empiricist standpoint. Okay, suppose that you lived on a planet which had numerous periodic electrical storms. Every single time in your life that an electrical storm approached, 
you would smell the scent of the ozone, feel the ground vibrate, see a flash of light in the sky, and hear the crack of thunder. Furthermore, no other known thing could produce any of those four things, right? So an electrical storm uniquely produces all four of those sense experiences. Then, one day, you hear the crack of the thunder, feel the ground vibrate, and see the flash of light, but you don't smell the ozone. Not sure why, but you don't smell it. Are those other things, those other three things enough to warn you that an electrical storm is approaching. All right, the second thought experiment is, suppose you're at a camp and it's time for dinner. A siren goes out and three beacons flash from the top of the building. Again, there's no other experience that produces any of these things. It's just when dinner is ready, those three things happen. So one evening you hear the siren, but only see two of the three beacons flashing. Are you still warranted in thinking it's time for dinner? So experiment three, Suppose you're part of a primitive tribe, one day you meet an outsider for the first time. You chat, he gives you a cell phone to keep in contact with him and shows you how to use it. So every time you receive a call, the phone vibrates and it rings. So you know that you're receiving the call from hearing the phone ring and feeling it vibrate. But one day you hear the ring but you don't feel the vibration. Do you have reason to believe that you're receiving a call? Okay, and if your answer to the other three is yes, it should be yes then to this fourth thought experiment because it's analogous. Suppose that every time you observe something beginning to exist, you observe a material cause and an efficient cause. But one day you learn that the world began to exist without a material cause. Are you justified in inferring an efficient cause? Shalom Aleichem.